If you were a gamer up until like the new generation of consoles, like the PS5, the, the Xbox Series X, you are definitely aware of special edition consoles. And if you don't know what special edition consoles are, it's basically like a unique, different aesthetic design to a console that a company will release. For example, Xbox 360 had some cool ones. They had the R2D2 one or the Modern Warfare 3 one. But if you look at the modern day consoles, there are like no special editions. It is insane. Now on the other hand, Nintendo actually has released a lot of special editions for the Switch, which is great. I want them to keep it up. Keep it up Nintendo, you're doing great. They have a wide selection. The Nintendo Switch Lite has several different colors to choose from. I know those aren't special editions, but still there's a selection there. And before I forget, I just want to announce I'm doing a giveaway at 12,000 subscribers for a $20 Nintendo eShop gift card. So all you have to do to enter the giveaway is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video and comment down below letting me know you want to be in the giveaway. And the Switch Lite also does have its own exclusive special editions. So, you know, like for example, the Mario Switch, the Splatoon 3 Switch, which I think is really cool looking, the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Switch. But if you look over at Sony or Xbox, guess what they have? The Series X has the Halo Infinite one, which came out several years ago, which, to be fair, it is a cool looking special edition console. I would buy it if I ever had the chance, but that is literally the only special edition console they have. The Series S, to my knowledge of doing research, I don't think the Series S has its own special edition. Like, I literally think they only sell it in the white color. And PlayStation 5? Also, what do you what do you think of when you think of PS5? Probably just the white, common PS5. Well, that's because there's only one again. I'm pretty sure, once again, you know, doing my research, my current knowledge, they only have the Spider-Man 2 special edition console, which is really cool, and I wanted to get this one really bad, and I... I kind of wish I waited just a little bit longer to buy my PS5 because I had the opportunity to buy one of these and I I already owned a PS5, but I bought that PS5 like a month earlier. So that was a little unfortunate, but it's no big deal because with the PS5, you could actually take off the side panels and then add, you know, ones that they sell and you could actually buy the Spider-Man 2 ones, like the side panels from Sony, but they're always sold out. Same with the controller. So you technically could create your own special edition PS5. Which I don't know if that's the reason why Sony doesn't do many special editions anymore is because they want to sell more of like the face plates, I guess I'll call them. Similarly to how the 3DS or the new 3DS, you could swap out the face plate and get some different unique designs on there. But at the same time, I would think they would still release special edition consoles to where you only have to buy that console and you can't buy the faceplate anywhere else. They do have a wide variety of the faceplates, several different colors, but at the same time, they are roughly like $45 to $50 depending on what color you want, which is cool. But at the same time, those are literally just solid colors and they would make your PS5 look a little bit more unique. But the cool thing with the special edition consoles is that you can only get them in stores from a for a limited amount of time you can't get them anywhere else you can't just buy the faceplate anywhere else you had to buy that console i guess you could buy like a knockoff one from like timu like a knockoff faceplate but you know that defeats the whole purpose and if you go ahead and look at some of their quote-unquote special edition consoles it's literally just like the ps5 with a different box art and comes with like a modern warfare 3 modern warfare 2 game whatever like it's the special edition consoles now are like a different box and it's it's no fun it's, xbox also does this exact same thing over here, we got the Xbox Series S, Fortnite, and Rocket League bundle, which you would think that would be a special edition console, but it's not. Literally, all it comes with is a different box art and two free games, and I think you probably would get some in-game content, like a Fortnite skin or a different looking car in Rocket League, which that's cool and all, but the console should be something unique. The console should be like a cool color, have a cool design on it. Horizon Forbidden West bundle, PS5. You'd think that's a special edition console? It's not. It just, you're paying more for some box art that you're gonna throw away anyways, because you're also paying an extra like 50 to $60 for the digital download huh? of the game. I think it's digital. It actually might come with a physical disc. I'm not entirely sure on that. But there's also a different caveat here. There's so many different factors into this. It's ridiculous. There are technically really cool special edition Xbox Series X's out there with technically Xbox, Microsoft, I'm, I believe PlayStation does this exact same thing as well, but I think Microsoft does it more than PlayStation or Sony, I guess I should say. But take a look at this console. This is a SpongeBob limited edition Microsoft Xbox Series X. And this is a really cool looking console. I mean, 
I guess you could debate whether or not that's cool or not, but it's unique. You can't doubt that that's not super unique. And take a look at this. We got a, a Gucci collab with Xbox. You got Armored Core. You got a Porsche collab, which the Porsche collab one is super, super cool. There's also a TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles bundle. But the thing is, you could literally only get these in sweepstakes. And the odds of you winning these, like, one of one or one of, like, ten or twenty consoles is, like, slim to none. And it's no fun and it is no fair. Like, imagine back in the day with the Xbox 360. I know most of you probably had the white one. I had the white one as a kid or the black one, the slim, which I know a lot of people had as well, but they had a lot of special edition consoles. And I remember going to the store and I would always love looking at the special edition consoles. The 3DS as well, I would go into this factor, the DS, the DSi, they had all these awesome special editions. So we got the Halo 3 special edition, Microsoft Xbox 360. You got the Resident Evil one. There was a R2D2 one. I actually own the Modern Warfare 3 Special Edition Xbox 360. I got it at a garage sale for 40 bucks with two controllers to match it. And that thing is awesome. I love it because I'm honestly afraid to use my, my childhood Xbox 360 because I have the original one with the like silver label disc opener or whatever, which I'm pretty sure that's the one that is most prone to the Red Ring of Death. So I'm deathly afraid of getting the Red Ring of Death on my childhood Xbox 360. So when I do use my 360, I usually use the MW3 one, which is great. I love that console. It's and again, if you do buy a special edition console, it actually retains more value than the base model because it's more unique, it's more limited, and years down in the future, it's gonna be worth more. The Xbox One and PS4 also actually did have a pretty solid amount of special edition consoles. Ironically enough, the only other special edition console I own is another Xbox. I own the Forza Motorsport 6 or 5, I can't remember if it's 5 or 6, I think it's 6, special edition Xbox One. But when you turn on the Xbox, it makes like an engine starting noise, which is so unique and it's so cool. And the best thing about it, this thing you could buy in stores. You didn't have to enter a sweepstake. This was available in stores. I'll just list a couple special edition Xbox Ones and PS4s really quick. You know, some honorable mentions. There is a white PS4. There is a Metal Gear Solid PS4. There was a Darth Vader PS4. PS4 actually had a, a quite a few special editions. Looking at the Xbox One, the Xbox One apparently didn't have a ton, but they still had a few. There was the Halo 5, Special Edition, there was the Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, the Forza Motorsport 6. Okay, so I'm going back a little bit here. This one's an honorable mention. This one is not one that you were ever able to get in stores, but this has got to be the coolest console of all time. This was made for EA Electronic Arts at a gaming convention for in 2006 for the PS2, but it's literally a car that is a PS2. The PS2 is this car. The set of keys turn on the console. You have to use the keys to turn the console on, and that's how you play games. Like I said, this one was not available in stores, but could you imagine if this was available in stores? This thing would be sold out no matter what. In the modern day, Nintendo is pretty much the only company that I, I can think of that's doing special edition consoles. And there's just something so cool and unique about owning a special edition console. And it's so unfortunate that a lot of the new generation of kids that are playing on the new consoles, like where their childhood console is a PS5 or an Xbox Series X or S, that they can't experience the opportunity to have a special edition console unless they were lucky enough to get the Halo Infinite one or just the Spider-Man 2. I mean, at least Nintendo, like I said, I keep going back to Nintendo because they're doing it right. They have released a, quite a handful of special edition Nintendo Switches while also allowing us to buy our own colors of like Joy-Cons and stuff because even though they give us those cool Joy-Cons to buy like at Target on the shelves or whatever and just add it to our regular Switch to make it look more unique, they also release special edition consoles to where it's like you can only you can only get those Joy-Cons with those consoles and the consoles themselves are even, you know, pretty designed on the back and they also have a cool like dock, which is great. You know, everything about the special edition Switches are super cool. But with PS5, it's like, hey, if you want a special edition, give us 45 more dollars plus $17 shipping and handling to make your PS5 blue. Same thing with Xbox. With Xbox, you can't even modify your, your console at all. Like, I guess at the very least with the PS5, you can modify it a little bit. And if you want to buy the Series X special edition Halo Infinite one, 
Good luck finding one on eBay for under, you know, $800, $700 because, like I said, they retain their value and people want them, especially when it's like the only special edition console out there. But yeah, if there's anything I missed or forgot about, like I'm, there may have been a console or two that, that slipped my research, but I looked online a lot and all I could find were like the super rare one-offs that you can only win in a sweepstakes or just the infinite one and the Spider-Man one, which, you know, Where's the magic? The special edition consoles just make it more fun, and I guess I'll use the word magical for lack of better word. That's like, they have different consoles out there and not everyone's gonna have the exact same color console. I hope that makes sense. I, I really hope my point is getting across here. I just wanna see more special edition Xbox Series Xs and more PS5s because we know that Sony and Xbox can make some really cool and unique special edition consoles that like make a certain noise when they boot up, have a really cool like finish and paint or just design on it. It's possible and I don't know where it is, I don't know if they're too lazy, if that costs them too much, I don't know what's going on, maybe they're just not focused on that, maybe people didn't, maybe they think that people don't care, but people definitely do. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did please make sure to leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one, peace.